Welcome to Bite Size Worship this week. During Lent, we're going to be looking at the Psalms. The Psalms are a great spiritual resource for us. I think it's a sure fact that they are among the best loved and most read parts of the Old Testament. They express the whole range of human experience and feeling from dark depression to sheer joy. They are rooted, yes, in a particular time and context, yet they are timeless. Like the writers of the Psalms of old, we too are stirred by the same emotions, we puzzle over the same problems in life, and we cry it in pain when we are confronted by the horrors of life. I think this is why we find it so easy to identify with them and find inspiration in the depth of faith and determination which is shown in them. So the first psalm that we're looking at is Psalm 8. At its heart, it's a hymn of praise to God, his character and deeds. But it's also a celebration of God's glory seen in creation. An opening prayer. O Lord God, creator of all, open our eyes to beauty, open our minds to wonder, open our ears to others, open our hearts to you. Amen. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalms, reading from Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the prayers of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds, and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here are a few facts to get us started. The book of Psalms in the Old Testament are actually a collection of five books. There are 150 Psalms in total, and within the five books, the Psalms are often grouped according to common themes, a common purpose, or a common author or a collector. Some of the Psalms name the author or collector and relate to specific events in history. Some would say many of the Psalms are hymns of praise. Others would describe the Psalms as more poetry, which were intended to be sung. Last week in our bite-sized worship, we looked at the Old Testament character of David. In the Psalms, 73 Psalms bear David's name. Some no doubt dedicated to him as king, some collected by him, and a good many probably of his own composition. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. In Psalm 8, you can imagine David looking up into a dark starry sky and having his mind blown away. Wow. I'm told that with the naked eye, one can see about 5,000 stars. With a four inch telescope, you can see about 2 million stars. With a 200 inch mirror of a great observatory, you can see more than a billion stars. The universe is so big that if you were to travel at the speed of light, it would take 40 billion years to reach the edge of the universe. Considering the heavens makes us see the greatness of God. What great God has made this vast universe? I suspect like me, you have done the same on a clear night particularly when away from light pollution, marvelling at God's awesomeness and feeling so small and insignificant in relation to what you see. As David says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them?
David marvels that God not only bothers about us humans, but he also has set us over all the rest of creation. As verse 5 to 8 say, You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers of the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Wow again. This not only is a huge privilege, but also a huge responsibility too. David alludes to the story of creation in Genesis chapter 1. Many think he must have known this ancient writing and clearly knows that the authority that God gives to humankind goes hand in hand with the responsibility to wisely manage the creatures and resources of this earth in a way that gives God glory and is good for humanity. It means that it is wrong to see humans as merely part of the ecosystem, thus denying his God-ordained dominion. It is also wrong for humans to abuse the ecosystem, thus making humanity bad managers of that which ultimately belongs to God. The mandate of dominion asks humanity to use the creatures and resources of the earth, but to use them wisely and responsibly. One of the five marks of a mission is to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of our earth. Our length course this year looks at the different ways we follow Jesus more closely and the last week, week six, explores our relationship with the earth itself. There's more details of the sessions at the end of this bite-sized worship. In short, the last session looks at God's call on each of us to tread lightly on the earth that he created. We are well aware of the effects of climate change and we are also asked as human beings to combat these by thinking more carefully about how we lead our lives. As Christians, this should be paramount with our walk with God. What do we see as the most urgent environmental challenge facing the world today? What can we do as individuals and in our churches to show we take this seriously? This involves making changes to our lifestyle and taking small steps in the right direction. It might include signing up with a green energy supplier, reducing our purchase of single-use plastic items and remembering to put our rubbish in the correct recycling bins but it's also about seeing how we can run our churches in a better way. In our team, each of our parishes is looking at how we can be better eco-churches. Eco-church, run by A Rocker UK, encourages and supports churches in their care for God's creation. Listen out for more details at your church and how you and your family can be involved. The A Rocker website has some good ideas and challenges for us all this Lent called Get Outside in Lent. If you don't have access to a computer or an iPad to look this up, ask one of the clergy and we'll gladly ensure you get a printed version. There are lots of great ideas for individuals and families. David ends this psalm exactly as he began it. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We've had some lovely sunny days recently. So take some time this week to immerse yourself in God's creation if you can. Then in response, find one more thing. It could just be a little thing to do to care for God's earth better.
A closing prayer. Lloyd, grant us the wisdom to care for the earth and till it. Help us to act now for the good of future generations and all your creatures. Help us to become instruments of a new creation founded on the covenant of your love. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Bite Size Worship again. Some notices follow, including a notice about the Lent course. If you haven't come along, do please come and try it. I think you'll enjoy it. Please keep safe and keep well. And until next time, God bless. Thank you.